Today we're going to look at running a random vibration response analysis in Abacus. So here I have a PSD input vibe curve and you can see the units or frequency versus PSD in G's per squared per Hertz and it's a logarithmic scale. Here's our breakpoint table, our frequencies and our associated PSD values. We're going to go put this run an analysis in Abacus so if we go to our assembly, this is the part we're looking at. What we want to do first is uh, we want to put in our breakpoint table. So go down here to Amplitude, do Create, and we want to make a PSD definition. I'm just going to call this PSD. And then what we have here, we have specification units. We're not in power. We're in gravity-based motion in our reference gravity. Because uh, I'm using American units, um, I'm going to use 386.1 as my reference gravity. That's going to be gravity in inch units. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in our frequencies and our PSD values. Uh, we don't have any imaginary components. I've never used this. There's reasons to use this. Uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, I, I'm not experienced enough to know. but. Um, the majority of cases you're going to have real values. So I'm going to put in my frequencies. And then I got to put in my PSD values. And then you want to put in zeros for the imaginary values. So there we have it. Um, we have our PSD amplitude curve. Now we can go create a PSD step. So let's go to the step module, create step. We're going to call this PSD. And we want to do a random response. And then what we're, we have here is we have some inputs. So our PSD values and our frequency values, they're on a logarithmic scale. So we're going to choose logarithmic as our scale. And this is where you basically you select your response points. So you may have to play with this depending on the PSD curve you're given. A lot of times it's just um, what I like to do is I just take the frequency values in the PSD curve breakpoint table and I just use that. And then I'm going to copy these. So delete that. So that covers our bases right there. I may have to come back and adjust this, but the number of response points I want to get is going to be 20, and at each natural frequency, it's going to um, essentially put 20 points between natural frequencies and 20 points between our lower frequency and our upper frequency. So once again, go read the documentation to understand that. I'm going to use a bias of 1 because that's just going to create evenly spaced points. And then damping, um, we're doing the simulation between 1 and 2,000 hertz. That's what we specified in the modal analysis. So I'm going to start at 1 and go to 2,000. And damping factor we like to use in uh, industry is 0 0.025. That's a good starting point if you don't know what it actually is, which you probably won't. And then we say OK. So we have that. And now it should have automatically created a filled output for us. Let's just go look at that real quick. Um, really, what's important for our analysis right now um, is going to be um, stress values. And really, when we're talking about vibration, we want our root mean squared value. So we're going to get our R Mises and then RS stress. Um, those are two outputs that uh, we'll, we like to use. Also, um, 
what we want to do to speed up the simulation is we just want to um, instead of taking the frequency at every increment we just want the last increment because remember when we're doing a random vibration we're using integration so really um, to get the RMS value we're using integration so the last point is going to have the highest value of stress for random response vibration purposes or, or through an analysis so if you're not familiar with that pick up a textbook but this speeds up the simulation tremendously and so we get our R Mises stress value and our root mean square stress value and we're good to go we can say okay so we've created our filled output another thing that I like to do is um, I like to just pick up a, a node on here um, and look at the response so I'm going to say response node I'm just going to pick one and this mesh is not very fine because I'm using the student version but I'm just going to pick this node right here and somewhere in the middle well, let's go over here there we go let's pick that one just something off the boundary uh, conditions so that you can look to see if your response makes sense. I'll discuss that in detail here shortly and you'll see what I'm talking about. So done. Response node. What I like to do next is um, go create a history output for that response node. So PSD response node is what I'm going to call this. Select the PSD step, say continue, and I want to do every increment on this because I want to see where it takes the responses at and see if the curve is uniform and nice and neat and not jagged. Um, and we're going to select a response node set, every increment. And then what we want to do next is I like to look at accelerations. So TA, let's just select TA1, TA2, TA3. We'll look at the response for those parameters. Say OK. It's been created. And we're good there. So next we want to put our PSD input into our model. So how do we do that? Well, we go to the load module and we go to create boundary condition. We want to create a acceleration base motion for PSD input curve and in the PSD step. Call this PSD BC. And then you want to put your PSD input into the boundary conditions, and this is the directions you want to go in. Um, using the global coordinate system, I'm just going to say uh, the x direction, so it's going to be relative to our global coordinate system, um, not our locals. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then correlation, um, so this right here, we want to specify a correlation uh, for small components um, like like this right here will use correlated uncorrelated is used for like multiple PSD inputs and for larger structures where there may be some time lag between where the PSD input goes into the boundary conditions so for like a large building with uh, uh, columns that are spread out over a large area you know you may want to use uncorrelated but for a small component like this we'll see the same PSD input at, at all the boundary conditions so we'll say correlated and then use our PSD uh, amplitude curve so what we select and we're just going to specify one for real zero for imaginary and if you want more info on that go to the Agabicus documentation okay so we pretty much have everything set up now so now we can actually go run the PSD analysis or the random vibration analysis. So what we'll do next is we'll create a job. I created the job already. 
So it's called PSD. I'm going to submit it. And then we'll pause the video um, as it cycles through that. It's been submitted. So the random vibration response has completed. Let's go to results. And we can see here um, our armeses and you know my mesh here once again. This is the student version. I just can't increase the mesh density, so you're just gonna have to live with this. Uh, but you can see it gives our armeses values and then our R stress values in different directions. Root mean square stress values, excuse me, and our root mean square of Amici stress. So that's what we have there. Um, so the next thing I would do is uh, before I actually go into post processing is I want to go look at that response at that node. So we'll go to create XY data, ODB history output, and um, I put the PSD um, in the X direction is where I'm vibrating in the X direction so TA1 is what I want to plot and you can see it's the response at that node and the curve looks pretty good I mean if I needed to refine it more around these peaks I could and the way I would do that is I go back into my step right here and I would go um, edit this and you know increase the number of points but remember there's a, if you increase the number of points, the longer simulation is going to be. And so there's trade offs. And then I could change the bias. Um, but this is just something you play with, right? Um, I can't really, I don't have a good methodology for it. Uh, the default values usually work pretty good, but it, it can vary from case to case uh, depending on where the natural frequencies and, and those fall um, in our. Um, the frequency range we're looking at so but yeah so that's what we have um, so um, in the next in the upcoming video I'll go into post-processing how to look at this uh, from a material component perspective but that's how you run a PSD or random vibration analysis in Abacus using a PSD input curve so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time Adios.